So it's uh, the start of 2019 and it's also the end of our first year on YouTube. Yes, so we thought it would be a good opportunity to reminisce, to go through our favourite photos, um, the memories behind the photos, um, also to share with you guys what our plans are for 2019. Yeah. yeah, and also cover some of our highlights from 2018, not just our favourite mm. photographs, but our, our kind of favourite moments of the year as well, and those, those bits which have really stayed in our memories. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always nice to look back at the end of one year, the start of an, a new year, and yeah, just... And also to see how, you, how our photography has progressed over that year as well. I think, uh, yeah, I think <laughs> our photography has definitely progressed definitely. over the last 12 yeah. months, so yeah. 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 I think it's worth reminiscing about. Yeah. Um, so one of my um, earliest sort of uh, trips which I did this year was um, a trip which I did to the Brecon Beacons. And that was the trip where I um, set myself a challenge of taking just one single image from the trip. And that was a really useful exercise for me um, because it was basically, the idea behind it was that I'd, I'd climb up Penny Fan and basically set, and take just one single image that's pressing the shutter just once and limit myself just to that one exposure. Um, and it was a really useful exercise. And actually, if you ever have the chance to do that yourself, I highly recommend that you do it because it really made me stop and think about uh, composition and setting up the shot and you know, just taking the time to find um, what I thought was the best composition at the location for that evening which I could find. Mm. Um, and this was the image which I took away from it, and I, I don't know if it's necessarily one of the best images of the year, but for me it's, it's quite symbolic of um, actually going through that process and taking the time to actually think about composition. The opposite of spray and pray. Really. Exactly, the opposite Basically. of spray and pray. And uh, going on since that trip, it's uh, the lessons which I, I learned by doing that um, have actually changed the way I've done photography since mm. then. And it's something I've always had in the back of my mind in every subsequent photography trip. Mm. Um, so it's certainly uh, been it's a good e learning exercise. Exactly, yeah. yep. And the other thing that I did early on in the year was to go on a mountain hare photography workshop with Tesney Ward, um, who is a well-acclaimed wildlife photographer. Um, that was awesome. I'd, well, first of all, I'd never seen a mountain hare before, so just seeing one um, and seeing one very close was, was great. But also, Tesney has befriended many of the hares, so she knows them by name and can get quite close to them. Um, and just yeah, learning her from her experience and getting like ten meters away from a mountain hare was yeah, that was definitely one of the highlights of the year. Mm. One of the yeah. highlights of the year. Yeah, and incidentally, actually, we we had a trip um, later in the year. Actually, since we we went had our Iceland trip, we we went back to the same location. Mm -hmm. We didn't manage to shoot a vlog, but we did find yeah. some hares, didn't we? And, yeah. and that was my first experience of seeing a mountain mm. hare. Um, and I guess that brings me on to the next point, which this, this year for, for me was one of the first years where I've tried to actually try my hand at wildlife photography. Mm. Um, and although I've not had much success with wildlife photography, I don't think I've managed to get any particularly good wildlife images. Um, in terms of actually finding wildlife and uh, finding scouting out locations of where to find them, um, it's been quite a productive year for me and actually one, one of the first sort of challenges I set myself was to try and photograph badgers um, and in one of my, my first vlogs I, I did a video about scouting out locations for wildlife photography and when I was making that video I came across a few badger sets and actually um, I, I did a few trips back to that location um, to see if I could see badgers as they were coming out of their sets um, and actually, on the second attempt, I did actually see badgers coming out of their sets. Unfortunately, it was too dark to, to film it for a vlog. Um, but that was certainly one of the highlights of my year. It was actually, uh, although it wasn't the first time I'd seen a badger, it was the first time I'd found a set, um, scouted it out, realised it was, it was an active set, and actually waited out at night, um, waiting for the badgers to emerge and actually getting my first glimpse of them. So that was, that was a great experience. Yeah, I mean... One of my memories I was going to share was a couple of memories of <clears throat> it's sometimes you encounter animals, wildlife, and it's just a passing glimpse. You know, you spook a hare and it runs away, or it's in the distance, you never really get particularly close to it, and it doesn't have that magical feel. It doesn't mm. have that, I don't know, one on one, it's seen me, I've seen it um, type bonding. 
Um, and occasionally you do get those moments and I had one this morning um, so I've started trying to befriend the local urban foxes and there was a fox basically asleep in front of me probably 10 meters away um, he or she knew I was there lifted her head every now and again and um, yeah completely unfazed by me and yeah I, that was just there was nowhere else I would rather have been at that moment than kneeling in the dark on the pavement watching a fox sleep. Mm -hmm. so yeah that was awesome yeah. so actually that's one of the things that um, I'm kind of jumping up the order in which we're supposed to be doing this video now but one of the things which we want to be doing a lot more of in 2019 is wildlife photography um, and I think we've we've started to uh, like I say it's not been the most successful year in 2018 for me personally with wildlife photography I think Hannah's had much more success than I have um, but hopefully, was better, to hopefully be honest, we'll have a lot more wildlife based videos coming coming next year hmm. um, so the next sort of I guess big thing that happened that we did this year was we went to Corsica hmm. Um, and Corsica was a location which we chose to visit um, for a holiday but we chose it based on um, the potential there for doing wildlife photography. Well, general photographic landscapes as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but definitely, I'd say, the day that we spent at the Aguil de Bavella in uh, Corsica has to rank up there as probably one of the best days of photography I've, I've ever had, actually, since I started doing photography. Um, that place was just absolutely beautiful. The mountains um, were stunning. It reminded me of... Um, although I've never been um, to, to the Italian Dolomites, it reminded me of what I, I'd, I'd imagine the Italian Dolomites would be like. Um, but it was also an area which we hadn't really seen many um, photographs from that area before, so it felt relatively uh, untouched. It wasn't a case of going there and having a photograph in mind because you'd seen it before. Oh, definitely. Completely untouched. Yeah. Which I just loved as, as a photographer to go somewhere which mm. um, you're not familiar with from a photography point of view. Mm and just be able to find and, and I this photograph here of the um, Aguil de Bavella with the sun rays coming down I think is definitely one of my favorite photographs of the year um, and yeah, it was just one of those moments where everything just came together and we'd been sat out there waiting on top of that mountain for a couple of hours and then all of a sudden we had that the sun just came down through those those clouds and then later on in the day as well um, when uh, we just had this amazing sunset and, and, and the mountains had been shrouded in mist or cloud um, and then all of a sudden the cloud just broke and there was these lovely pink colours of sunset and I managed to take this photo with the pink clouds above the mountain and that was just such an amazing day for me. Hmm. And then the other holiday, the other main holiday we had this year was Iceland. Um, first time either of us had been to Iceland and both utterly loved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think to be honest, if if we had to choose sort of the best five photographs of the year, for mm. me they'd probably all come from Iceland. <laughs> Potentially, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. We just yeah, we loved it. I mean, it's so beautiful there, and it catered to both of us. You know, I kind mm. of much more prefer the intimate landscapes, and Sam's better at your mm. grand vistas, mm. but both were catered for, and it, ah, yeah, yeah. We were blessed with northern lights mm. and a lovely pink dawn over Westerhorn. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Well, those, those two moments, I think, are, have to be probably joint top of my list <laughs> for 2018 of my favourite moments mm. of the year. Um, the Northern Lights on our first evening. Um, I'd seen Northern Lights before very faintly when I lived up in Scotland, um, but never like that. We had a KP6 and it was our first mm. evening in Iceland as well. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've had lots of friends who have gone to Iceland to see the Northern Lights and not seen them. Um, so it's never a guarantee, but to have them that strong and just that amazing mm. on our first evening was mm. just, we were so lucky and it was just stunning. Um, and yeah, we got some, um, I think we got some good photos of them as well. And first first attempt doing astrophotography, or well, it's not really astrophotography, it's first time doing night photography. Mm. Um, and yeah, that was just, yeah, words can't describe really just what an amazing experience that was. Um, and then, yeah, definitely that, that morning in Vesterhorn, where we had the dawn at Vesterhorn, that was just absolutely stunning. Um, we sort of mentioned this in our, in our Iceland video, but uh, when we went to Iceland, um, Iceland hadn't actually been top of mm. our list of places to visit for photography. Um, we'd kind of always thought we'd love to go to Iceland to do a photography trip at some point. 
um, but we hadn't really planned to do it this year particularly um, but then we were invited out on a family holiday and we thought well, yeah absolutely we'll go to Iceland um, and although we sort of thought Iceland would be uh, a great place to do photography we were always kind of put off just because it's such a popular location mm. and it's kind of everyone goes to Iceland to do for photography yeah. um, but it, that, that kind of put us off a little bit um, you kind of think is it cracked up to what yeah. it's meant to be and is there anything else that you can photograph in Iceland that hasn't already been photographed but how wrong we were how wrong we were <laughs> we have abs- we've probably got this impression from our videos if you've seen them but we basically have just completely fallen in love with Iceland now it was just incredible and we can't mm. wait to go back again at some stage so as soon mm. as we can <laughs> we'll be going back to Iceland again it was just absolutely amazing amazing location so that leads quite nicely into talking about what our plans are for 2019. Iceland. Iceland. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, so. yes, we, we will go, definitely will go back to Iceland at some stage. At some stage, yeah, we definitely. We yeah. haven't decided if we want to go in the summer, autumn or winter. So, yeah, yeah uh, and the other thing is we'd quite like to head somewhere a bit more off the mm, beaten track if next time we go back yeah. there. So um, we had thought if we go back in the summer, then that could potentially um, open the door to maybe traveling around the north a bit mm. more puffins puffins as well so yeah, yeah so yeah. Yeah, we'll, 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 see. we'll see but certainly Iceland is is a potential plan for 2019 mm-hmm. and hopefully we'll be able to take you guys back there next year mm-hmm. um, um, Cairngorms and the Cairngorms was the other one which we're currently planning for the spring yeah okay. yeah early spring early spring yeah. slash winter um, hoping to see some mountain hares there um, plan is basically to dedicate a whole week to trying to find mountain hares. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said earlier, one of the things that we're really keen to do with this channel is to do more wildlife photography. Yeah. Because yeah. um, it's something that we both enjoy. Even though, like I say, we, you know, we're at fairly early stages in our wildlife photography mm. experience, but um, uh, it's certainly something that we'd like to be able to film more and, and put more into our videos. And it, so. it can take more time as well if you're having to find the animals. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. dedicating a week to it would probably be quite a good idea. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The other project that I'm working on, well, just started working on, is I want to befriend the local urban foxes. Um, yes, I know it's been done before. And in Bristol, <laughs> yep. and exceedingly well. Yes. Um, I'm definitely not trying to better Sam Hobson at all there. Yep. Um, but I don't think that's a reason not to do things. Absolutely not, no. 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 I have never befriended a fox, got close to a fox, well, until this morning. Um, but yeah, it's an experience that I want to go through and I want to see what photos I get. So I'm not going to be intimidated by Sam Hobson. And Who has done some absolutely <laughs> stunning photographs of the foxes in Bristol. Yeah. If, you, I'm sure if you're not familiar with Sam Hobson's work, <laughs> go and check it out. Uh, yes, but yeah, actually this morning was um, one of the moments where I finally made a kind of connection with one of the foxes so I'd seen them darting around and one of them or two of them had kind of sauntered towards me a bit but today was the first day that one of them trusted me enough to basically snooze in front of me which was fantastic. Um, I am genuinely saying this without, I don't have a hidden stash of decent fox photos in the bag that I'm secretly sitting on and then go ha ah, I told you I was going to do this. <laughs> Genuinely, the only shots I've taken of the foxes so far have been on my mobile phone from a distance and mm-hmm. look absolutely terrible. So yep. that is a, essentially a brand new cha- challenge for 2019. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's also part of the you know the, the fun of wildlife photography as well, isn't it? Is mm. is getting to know your subject and spending that time actually scouting out locations mm. and get it, getting the, particularly with, with species like urban foxes, where you, know, you can you don't have to maybe keep such the distance from them as you would with wild wild foxes living out. In the country you can you can sort well, of defend they're, them a they're bit predators more. as well so you probably stand more chance of you know compared to a yeah, hare yeah. which should have that instinct to bolt a predator should be slightly less scared of you so. hopefully no, that's a theory anyway <laughs> so. yeah so it's going to be great to take you guys on that hmm. little journey um uh, and yeah, I think just in terms of landscape photography, I think looking back over the photos I've taken over the last last year, I'm starting to feel like I'm progressing a little bit with the photography. Um, and um, I, I, it's like I was saying earlier, it's useful looking back at those early photographs. And usually I look back at past photos and think, oh, 
I get embarrassed looking yeah, back I get embarrassed. And, and looking back at past vlogs as well I mean, yeah. you just ignore all of our early vlogs yeah. by the way if you're new to the channel then <laughs> <laughs> some of it's awful um, but yeah it's so but I, I particularly I guess some of some of the photos from Iceland and I'm starting to feel like um, and again I'll look back in the, back at this video next year and think what am I talking about but I'm starting to feel like I'm getting to have a better idea of the sort of landscape photography that I enjoy doing and the sort of landscape mm. photos I like to take and also in terms of the processing the kind of style mm -hmm. that, I, that I like to do so you know we've all been through that kind of HDR mm -hmm. phase or, or we've all over processed photos before and one of the things which I'm particularly keen to do with my photos this year is take a far more minimalist approach to the processing and have a far more natural mm. look about them. Um, I mean I'm greatly inspired by photographers such as Alex Nail um, and uh, Theo Bosboom as well mm -hmm. who is one of your favourite photographers who's yeah. done lots of kind of minimal photos in Iceland mm -hmm. and that's something which I'm yeah. hoping um, that I'll be able to bring into my own sort of photography or it's certainly an approach I'd like to bring into my own photography over the next next mm. year or so. And that's something that I, I feel it's quite nice having you and I as a couple in that we talk about photography a lot and we can both go to the same location and have completely different stances on what the subject matter is mm. and I think I, yes I would learn that about myself if I didn't have Sam but having someone else there on the same location at the same time in the same lighting conditions yep. and seeing things in a completely yep. different way. I yep. Yeah, I think learning about Well, it's, it's just nice thing. to have a, se a second set of eyes on your work as well. And, yeah. and quite often, if you know, if I'm doing a, a, a editing a photo and Hannah will come in and she'll say, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> so you useful. You usually <laughs> ask me what my comments are. It's not just yeah. that I come over and stare over your shoulder and go, yeah. oh, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, it's going to be fantastic to take you guys on the journey over the next 12 months. And we just wanted to say a massive mm. thank you as well for, for sticking with us um, over the last year. Um, and um, if you're new to the channel as well then, then we hope that uh, you're getting something out of this as well um, and also thanks for putting up with our slightly sporadic mm. uploads over the last few months we, yeah. we, we do both work full time we're not <laughs> we're not professional photographers and we mm. have extremely busy day jobs and so sometimes yeah. I'm afraid you know we have the odd week where we're not able to get mm. a, a video out so so please do bear with us when when that happens and, and thanks for your yeah. patience with that um, but we do have a lot of great videos hopefully coming up over the next 12 months so um, if you are new and you haven't um, subscribed to our channel already then do please consider subscribing to the channel we really appreciate your support mm -hmm. um, and also keep the comments coming below as well because we, we try yeah, to answer definitely. every comment um, and like I said so it's having that extra feedback on mm. your work is such a useful useful thing so do please keep commenting yeah. And wow, wishing you well for 2019. Yep, have a great year. Thanks for watching. <laughs>